Getting into a giant build battle will probably attract even more attention. With two enemies in the fight, you're going to end up just using a ton of mats if they challenge height too. The best move is really just to box up with hard mats, play it safe, and hope they just fight each other. What's going on guys? This is Not Your Ordinary Guy. This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I hope you guys are great. I hope you're staying positive, man. Keep that positive mindset. Even during the hard times, stay positive, man. That's how you become successful, not only in this game, but also in life. Can you stay positive? I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. In today's edition of What Would You Do? We're going to be analyzing a few clips, this time from Phase Mongrel, NRG Unknown, and recent DreamHack champion, Liquid Stretch. Along the way, we're going to occasionally pause, all right? And I'm going to ask you, what do you think they should do? And I want you to do your best and pick what you feel is right. Topics we're going to be going over in this video include W King and low point lobbies, awkward fighting and peace control, and ways to counter overly aggressive players. It's going to be jam-packed, guys. So make sure to watch the entire thing, because I promise the advice is going to help you improve. But drop a like on the video and, you know, just check to see your sub, all right? Let me know in the comments what is your highest elimination game so far this season. If it's below five, then you need to check out ProGuys.com where we have pro coaches and these new amazing live classes, man, that are definitely going to boost that number. Also, I got a live motivational class we just started, man, that has been so amazing. So you got to check me out every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon PST, man. It's going down and I get to connect with you even more. So that's what I want to do, all right? But without further ado, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back. Relax and grab some of my favorite candy. Everybody say it's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. Come on. First up, we've got Mongrel. And he's been W King like a maniac this game. Nine kills already. Woo, man. Still got the sauce. So <laughs> when he lands a tag on this player up ahead, he gets right in, right? Notice how Mongrel immediately swaps to hard mats. Keep a mental note, my friends, to always fight with brick or metal, not wood. Anyways, Mongo sprays his AR to take their wall, but at this point, I don't know if you can see it, but his opponent has no build inside his bot, so Mongo's going to edit the wall and go for peace control. Now, what do you think is his best option? Place a ramp or place a cone? Okay, so I know that the Mongo Classic is his famous move and all, but a cone is actually the better choice right here. As for why, okay, let me tell you. It prevents your opponent from editing down. Stairs are not gonna do that. So keep in mind that anytime your opponent is on their floor with space below them, place a cone. Mongo places the cone in a safe method as well. He edits on the side his opponent isn't on, quickly slides it in, resets, and holds the wall. Then he goes for some top corner edits. Lots of resets, making sure to always have control of this wall. But unfortunately, he whips a bit, and things turn for the worse when he gets sniped in the back. Ooh. All right, but look at this, all right? As he goes to place a wall in the sniper's direction, he instantly puts down a ramp behind him as well, which ends up giving him cover for the first player. That's actually kind of a cool technique we don't really see too often. But in this sticky situation, given everything you know about his loadout, mats, and HP, what do you think Mago should do? Turtle up and get some heals off, or grappler away back to the authority? Considering he's at 53 HP, two bullets is enough to finish this guy. So grappling away <laughs> would be an incredibly risky play. Instead, he's got some mats and a lot of chug splashes, so might as well just try to get them off. As he heals up though, Mongo does not make it easy for his opponent to reach him. He's always creating space by tunneling away from his opponent, something many of us really need to do when we're low. But the sniper ends up fighting the other player So hearing that, Mongo rushes right into the action. He puts a cone down just so he doesn't get ramped off, barely misses the first kill, and he cleans up the second. Overall, really nice recovery by my boy Mongo right here. Moving on, we've got another quick W key clip from the same match. Right away, Mongo spots a guy rotating up ahead, but he doesn't immediately shoot. So if possible, always check your surroundings before taking fights, especially when rotating near the storm's edge. Instead, while trying to get closer, he inspects his surroundings, making sure no one else is rotating behind him. Very smart. With the coast clear, Mongrel sees the guy swimming out in the open. He shoots, lands a couple of hits, and he grapples right in. This guy's but a skyscraper for some reason. So what would you do in this situation if you were Mongrel? 
shoot at their builds, or crank up while spraying to stop them from healing. I'm luck, bro. Like, this one's kind of easy, right? <laughs> the enemy here, and I mean like right here, made a fatal flaw of cranking up with only one ramp supporting him. And Mongro, yeah, he sees this one. So he drops them down, 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 lands a nice mid-air shot. Then look at this, man. Mongro instantly places every wall around his opponent and cones them too, boxing them in. After taking the ramp, he places another cone again to prevent editing down, and then he finishes them off. Now, I want to point out a couple of small yet significant things from Mongo's fight there, all right? First off, his opponent's fatal mistake. They overbuilt, bro. Cranking 90s is way less important than all the memes make it out to be, especially when held up by a single wood ramp. But even if it was two or three pieces, that's still pretty easy to destroy. Had they boxed up with steel or brick two by one and expanded when necessary, they would have stood a much better chance. And second, I mean, Mongo has some really safe positioning when he took the guy's ramp at the end. Try to position on the edges of the building grid so you can always place a reset a wall for media cover instead of just staying inside the box with them. He walked back a bit to go behind his edited wall. That way, if things ever went sour, he could just instantly reset the wall and create a barrier. Just something you should think about when you fight, guys. Okay, so you gotta make sure you don't go anywhere because this next clip, man, shows a fantastic peace control technique every player just has to know. But if you wanna learn more about Mongo's winning strategies, you gotta check out his master course over at our site. It is dope. It goes over how to be successful at editing, playing low ground, taking height, and so much more. Plus, you gotta sign up and you're gonna get access to our advanced daily classes, pro coaching, and plenty more exciting features we've got planned. So start your journey by clicking the description link or visiting proguys.com like now. Also, check out my live classes, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, Your Motivation Show with yours truly, Your Motivation Guy. Man, we're changing lives, man. We want people to be successful not only in this game, but also in life. All right, so we're back with Unknown and one of his DreamHack matches. It's still the qualifier, so he's taking his pad to W key. When out of nowhere, he gets hit in the back, but Unknown is too good. He turns around and he hits a quick scope shot for 96 shield. No crack though. Now, since he's unknown, of course, he's going to W key this one. On the way there though, he sees the enemy get some chuggies off, but he still rushes in, tries to get that ramp down for peace control, but gets tagged anyways. Okay, this is sort of an awkward spot. What do you think Unknown should do here? And I mean like right here. Flip the ramp to exit to a better position or flip the ramp and go for the kill. To guide your decision making, try to perform as much mental math for enemy HP as possible. So, since Unknown Snipe didn't crack their shields, if we do a little math, they went down to 104 HP. And after those chuck splashes, they're probably back up to at least 144, perhaps more. So, Unknown's on less health now, and given how awkward this spot they're fighting in really is, he's better off flipping the ramp and exiting to establish a better position. So, he does that, and he goes for a cheeky snipe too, but he misses. All right, no biggie, it's all good. Cause now, <laughs> he's in a better spot, and he can go up a layer and heal. But his opponent goes on the offensive, man, and Unknown attempts a quick edit, but they avoid it. They try another wall take, and Unknown does the same quick edit, but this time, he's way too quick. He gets them down to below 50 HP, and when Unknown has the advantage like this, he gets in there. But his opponent is actually doing a decent job evading him. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so at this point though, the enemy is low and only behind a single wall. What would you do right here? Keep trying to spray your way in or just go for a peace control play. Look, there are times when you can just straight up spray into somebody's box, but in cases where they'll expect it, you're gonna wanna find another way. And for a known, that other way is a peace control play. This one's an excellent finisher and is really useful to know. Watch this. So you jump up, catch yourself with the floor, but also floor cone over your opponent. Then you double edit through, place a cone inside, and swing your crosshair to build some walls. So you can see it here, and I mean like right here. The guy tries escaping, but it's now boxed in like a fish. And with that, Unknown gets the frag. Unknown landed some amazing shots in this clip, and the aggressive play really, really caught his opponent off guard. But from his opponent's perspective, they made a couple of fatal mistakes. First, his opponent didn't expect the second edit play. They already saw Unknown try it once, so they should have expected it the second time. 
And second, they didn't fully cover themselves at the end. I know they were busy trying to keep Unknown away, but that's also why it's so crucial to understand how to effectively expand and really just evade your opponent, right? If you're wondering how that is, don't worry, my friends. You're going to see this in the next clip. All right, guys, for the finale, we got a perfect example of how to recover from annoying W keyers and third parties. This one's from Liquid Stretch, one of NA's best players who recently dominated the NA East DreamHack Finals. So we're in the mid game here and out of nowhere, some Marauders drop right in front of Stretch. This kind of works out for him though, since he needs more shields for the end game. But for the unfortunate drawback is that it attracts a ton of unwanted attention. So Stretch boxes up and heals, but this opponent is rushing hard. Stretch has got to get more heals off, man. So he expands out of the back, making sure to build stairs behind him and to place a cone above him first so he controls the space above himself. After going for a couple more layers, he spots a third party sneaking up to the fight. So at this point, Stretch sees if he can land a safe shot or two, but he doesn't fully commit. And that's actually a really good thing too, because that third party is now making their way in. With an enemy ramping up to the left and another to the right, what would you do right here? Box up or crank up to contest high ground? Well, honestly, there's just no reason to contest high ground here. Getting into a giant build battle will probably attract even more attention. With two enemies in the fight, you're going to end up just using a ton of mats if they challenge height too. The best move is really just to box up with hard mats, play it safe, and hope they just fight each other. But of course, they don't do that. One player leaves, and after about 20 seconds, Stretch feels as if the coast is clear. But you know, <laughs> it wouldn't be a solo tournament without that one weirdo way too hungry for a kill. They land one hit on Stretch, which is apparently enough to keep W King. Stretch does an excellent job evading and even going for height when he sees the opportunity. But his opponent finds a lucky angle and lands a midi hit. And at that moment, the other player also joins in with the rifle. Okay, so Stretch is definitely not in a good spot here. Two enemies coming in hot right for him. What do you guys think he should do? Launch pad away or stay put and just fight for his high ground? Honestly, it's a really, really dangerous play, but padding is what Stretch chooses. I say it's risky because with two players nearby, he could get beamed out of the sky. But luckily, they don't even manage to hit him one time, which is pretty good. <laughs> Stretch can now hold a better position and he can see if any of them follow. One of them takes the bait, and since Stretch can actually aim, he ends up cracking their shields. But they are just so aggressive. One more tag and they crash pad towards Stretch. At this point, things are getting a little desperate and Stretch realizes he just needs to go for the kill. So first, he does a quick unexpected edit play, then resets and just goes for the cone and wall block. This cone and wall block technique can be done pretty safely from behind cover with the top right corner edit. Definitely something you guys need to practice. Really, really good. But anyway, Stretch edits out, and since their opponent isn't building anymore, he senses they're at a max. So Stretch just needs to play slow and just work on peace control. First, he takes the wall then the ramp. And then at this point, you know, Stretch could crash pad into the box. But instead, he's going to take the safer route and play some mind games. He jumps up to the left to indicate he's going in that direction, but instead jumps back down and he gets the kill. That was dope. Man, Stretch is insane, man. That was a really dope play. He must use ProGuys.com or something. Yeah, that's what it is. These mind games that misled your opponent can be absolute lifesavers, man, even when it's something as simple as quickly changing direction. But seriously, has Stretch tried another predictable edit or crash padding in? There's no telling if he would have lived. So playing a little mind game was definitely the right move for him, and it's something all of us can really start thinking about more often as we box fight. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man. I'm here for you guys, man. I know a lot of you guys I haven't met yet, but we're family, period, man. We're a family here. Bunch of crunch army, man. You better keep eating that bunch of crunch. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. If you enjoyed these tips, please don't forget to leave a like and hit that sub button and the bell if you haven't already. We're planning a lot more of these videos since you guys seem to like them a lot, which is dope. So make sure you're sub so you don't miss out. And you already know, man, at that 1 million mark, your boy is coming out with his own story of how I made it to where I am today, man. But I just want to inspire you guys. Be great. Never give up. Never surrender. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.